Hello YouTube, it's Sunday in the shop. We're going to dedicate this one to the battery box we're working on. We'll bring it down here where you can see it real quick. It's going to have the meter. There you can see it. Meter switches on it. Uh, some binding posts in the front so you hook power to the front. Okay, we're working on a piece for the back. The stuff I use is half inch. It's that MDF press sawdust, whatever wood they call it. Okay, so you're not going to get these to go through that thick. So what we do is like that face plate. We cut a hole on the back. We'll have a hole cut. We'll have this on and then we'll have our two little binding posts. Uh, go through plastic so it's something insulated. Same way as on metal because these can't go through metal. You maybe could figure it out by, but I wouldn't want to do it. You know, say you put a plastic o-ring or something there and it shifted i wouldn't attempt to do it in metal uh like putting a plastic space unless it was a really good one you know what i mean you can put a spacer on there so it stays centered in the hole i really don't want to do it i like being on the safe side but we got that we got all our switches stuff over here laid out uh switches like we're going to be using this is kind of complicated. It almost take a video to describe it. How I'm going to do this. We're going to have three batteries. This is just on and off switch. Uh, the way we're going to do this. We have a switch that's on or on here or off. Okay, now in these switches, say I flip the lever down, it's going to throw the contact to this one. So three would be down and two would be up. So disregard that right there but we're going to use the switch backwards juice usually comes in here and you pick two sources like two different lights say you want to put blinkers on a real old car or something you go left or right blinker for the power uh, we're going to run into reverse which won't hurt i've done it before so we're going to take either this battery or this battery to be able to select it okay we need one for the memory all the time so We'll have number one on all the time, okay? So what we're going to do is it won't hurt it. Say we turn the radio on, or before we turn the radio on, it's on number one for the memory. What we'll do is we'll select two or three, then go and shut this off. So you could run two batteries there at one time. You could run all three in parallel. That's the difference between parallel and series. I don't want to describe that, but you can see it's kind of a head scratcher. But in between this, this isn't the full diagram. Uh... All these battery connections are going to go to a main thing inside, which you'll see sometimes. It's going to go like a little mini bus bar uh, or little terminals. These are going to go to a terminal to be charged with the heavy wire. Going to go to a pretty heavy bolt post or something to charge. Then we'll tap off what's going to run to the switch. So I know it's totally confusing. We will snap a picture of that. But we'll go on. We'll show you a few more things as we work today here slowly. Uh working on this project so i figured i'm not going to make a video about building the battery box we'll just include it on the sunday in the shop but uh we'll like i said we'll take a picture of this if anybody wants to try to figure it out that is the little 12 volt meter in here 12 it's not a clock that's the little meter it's going to be tapped in but this is not the full schematic now this ain't the full thing it's not a schematic it's an actual picture schematic is different than a picture of drawing what you're doing so that's kind of complicated to explain to them. Stay tuned. We got you totally probably confused on that. So, uh, confused myself. So, we'll go off here. We'll come back as we get this ready to put on the back. Uh, this is where your power is going to come out to the radio. Whatever your power. Plus, we're going to have power on the front. So, we're making this video too long. We're looking at the timer. So, we'll stop it right now. We'll shut up and we'll get back to work. Okay, we're done with this little part. What we do is we sand one side and then the other side we scratch all our lines with the... I know you're not supposed to do that. These are junk. They're junk when I bought them. We won't even show you the name. And then we sand this side. Because you make them lines, you're going to sand all day to get rid of them. So we make all our lines here to measure and then we sand this side. But that's what we're making. That's simple. We're going to spray this. This was flat black. We're not going to gloss coat it black like the front. It's just a simple thing to, where we're going to cut the piece out of the wood. You'll see when I'm done. Uh, mounts at the back. This is what will power the radio. And like I said, I'll also have a uh, connection on the front to run like probably off 
uh, number one battery on the front for small projects or something. So stay tuned and next thing you'll see is this installed in the back of the box. So we can keep this video short today and interesting. We don't want it too long, it could get boring. Okay, we got a thunderstorm moving in. Oh, will it ever end? I, mean, I broke the corner over here. I was using this to run it in. My little eight, nine dollar, whatever thing at Harbor Freight. I really like it for small stuff. So we got smart and started finishing off with this. This I bought at get everything out of my hand. I put this, bought this at a hardware store. It's been in business for over 50 years since the 1950s. So it was early 2000s. You know, you pull this out, there's bits on the other end, I can't do it one-handed. Like this is your Phillips and a straight, and a smaller one on the other side. It's the smallest one I've ever seen before, made in the USA. So, I thought I'd lost it, I had it in my carpenter's toolbox. So, it's going off in my screwdriver box from now on. Okay, we'll turn you around and show you how cramped this is inside. But we want to set the battery down in there first. Okay, focus. To bend these up. What you're probably gonna be able to hear the wind trying to rip the shed apart. That's some I had didn't have the the plastic piece on, but it's never gonna touch. Boy, I may have to jump out and jump up and shoot a little film out the out the door. This is gonna have a battery turn this way over here and this way over here. We make things too small. This was all scraps we had left over. This started out with a two and a half inch hole saw. And a bunch of grinding with Dremel tools to get my face plate. But you'll see when it's done. Not today. I said we, we ordered. Well, that's a long story. I'll tell you the story in a video about the batteries. We ordered batteries they haven't got here. Uh, seven days from Kansas City, Missouri. To near Sioux City, Iowa. There's something wrong with the Postal Service. But we're going to pause here and give you a little bit of weather report. Sure, now the wind went down. Our trees didn't leaf out till a couple of days ago. They didn't leaf out till probably May 3rd. This is Saturday, the day before, but yeah, watch it calm down now, but got pretty windy there and some thunder a few minutes ago. So stay tuned. We'll put a little more in this video. This is how we made the lid. So we hooked the trim. To there to overlap. This is not made as good as my boom box. It's not straight at all. There's nothing straight on this box, but uh, the hinges will go through the edge of the wood. Which I'm gonna be really careful when I drill it. I might even put a little bit of glue on it. This piece is a different kind of stuff. It does not look like that MDF. This looks like cardboard. See that? It looks like ground up cardboard and glue. It's from another project. I said all this is scraps from two different projects I've done and had laying around in the shop. So thought I'd include that little clip. Okay, back to work. We'll show a little more of this before we get out of here. Okay, this is how we're going to charge our batteries. These are stainless bolts. I'll show you the package here. And I got these for free. The guy ringing it up in Harbor Freight, counting everything twice. Excuse my voice, I need a drink. <clears throat> Maybe a, something really stronger than lemonade after all this. Ring it up twice. I got home. It wasn't on the slip. I got them for free. We can get them open here. Different assorted lengths. Those little fancy washers. Those were used on door panels in the 50s cars maybe in the 60s but more like the 50s for the little cup type washers can you see them down in there of course you can okay and the ground is going to be on the other side here because i'm going to ground everything to a little brass plate i'm going to tap all my grounds off of that we're going to put some heavier wire from here to the batteries than what we're using here to run the radio now that radio has a 10 amp fuse, but we've run a 4 amp fuse. We've cranked that thing up quite a bit. We have not blown that 4 amp fuse. Even in a cheapy fuse holder. Uh, nothing's got hot or anything. We've cranked it up plenty of times. 
I wish I could turn the radio up so you guys could hear it. I just can't do it. There you go. I don't know what's going to be left before I get done with the video here. So uh, we may get the little ground part made. So stay tuned. Either way, we'll be back to say goodbye. Uh, we can't figure out anything else for today. Okay, we're about done for the day. We've got a piece of brass chin stock across there. That way we can hook whatever grounds we want over there. we got plenty of bolt length. And where that line is down here, that is the top of the battery. And the safety tip of the day is... When you're playing around with this stuff, notice I've had tape on here. Well, I'm putting this batteries in and out of here. So you're just playing around measuring something like this. You don't have to worry about it touching anything. There's plenty of clearance. Because if we're going to try to find heavier wire, what sucks is these terminals are so small on these. But I have clamped right onto them and charged it, this battery. But it's still kind of a mystery with my charger. The green light really doesn't come on like it should. With this type of battery, it'll sit there for a half hour and be charging about 14, 14 and a half volts. On my voltmeter, which is probably not super accurate, but uh, the battery story will tell another day. We're waiting on them. It's been 10 days. I will just give you the short story. It took over three days to get from Wichita, Kansas to Kansas City, Missouri. Standard postage, postal office. And it took since the 28th. Today is Saturday. I'm trying to think of the date, which is the 6th, and still nothing. So, I request another order, and they don't want to give it to me to them. Well, they want to make me wait to see if it ever shows up. Well, you know what that's like. But it's a company that sells through Amazon. I won't mention their name till things start getting nasty. You can tell the tone of voice. When it starts getting nasty, you better believe I'm going to badmouth them if they don't come through. Uh, they're going to blame it on the Postal Service. But still, they're responsible, right? Yeah, free shipping. They're responsible. So, I really got to blame it on the Postal Service, I guess. Enough of that rant. Thanks for watching this week. So, this thing will be done someday. I make things too complicated. This can be used for anything besides just a car stereo. I have three batteries. They're only 5 amp hour. You can read down in there. But, you run a lot of stuff off three little batteries. And like I said, we'll have a little voltmeter to monitor the voltage, and that will have a switch too. It won't have to run all the time. I can flip the switch and shut the voltmeter off. Save energy. So, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.